Okay, cat lovers, buckle up, because today we are going deep, deep into the inner workings of your cat's spine. We're talking way past x-ray vision here. This is pure science. You got that right. We're looking at some seriously cool research out of the journal Anatomia Histologia Embryologia. They used CT scans to measure the spinal columns of, well, a bunch of healthy Korean short hair cats. Fifteen, to be precise. Fifteen cat spines. And this wasn't just about, you know, making a fancy cat skeleton poster or anything. They dove deep. They were looking at the actual size of the spinal cord, which, and folks, this is the information superhighway of the cat's nerves running through the spine. And then on top of that, they measured the bony tunnel it sits in, you know, the one called the vertebral canal. So they were basically measuring the space inside the bones of the spine. Exactly. Okay, so why is that important? Well, get this. They wanted to see if the measurements were different between male cats and female cats. Oh, interesting, because, I mean, we know in humans, men and women often have really different skeletal structures. Mm -hmm. So is that a thing in the cat world, too? It is. You're thinking like a scientist. Yeah. The study actually found that male cats get this, they had significantly larger spinal canals mm -hmm. and e spinal cords compared to the female cats. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, even just thinking about how cats look, you know, you often see male cats who are just bigger overall. Exactly. Yeah. And it really just drives home the point that even within a single breed, like these Korean short hairs, there's just natural variation in how their bodies are put together. Yeah, it makes sense. So where does it get really interesting? Okay, so here's where it gets really wild. Okay. Even though those male cats had larger measurements overall, the ratio between their spinal cord size and the canal size, that was basically the same between the males and the females. Okay, hold on. Pump the brakes for a sec. Sure. Why is that ratio so important? I'm glad you asked that. Hmm. So that ratio, and listen closely because this is cool, it's the amount of space that spinal cord actually has within the bony canal. Hmm. And for vets, that's huge. It's a key thing they look at when they are trying to diagnose and treat any kind of spinal problems in cats. So give me an example. Like say a cat comes in and the vet thinks it might have a slip disc. Oh, and by the way, that's most common in a very particular area of a cat's lower back. Oh, see, you are just a goldmine of cat spine trivia. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so back to the slip disc. Yes. That ratio, the cord to canal ratio, helps the vet figure out how serious it is. Exactly. A vet can look at that ratio, and it's like they're looking at how much wiggle room that spinal cord has inside the canal. Oh, okay. So if that ratio is smaller, well, that could mean there's a higher chance of compression happening on the spinal cord, right? Yeah. And that could mean the cat is going to have way more serious symptoms. Wow. Okay, so this little detail from a CT scan can actually change how a vet thinks about treating a cat. That's amazing. Absolutely. And it just goes to show how crucial it is to get those anatomical measurements. It's not just about knowing like what's supposed to be there in the cat's body. It's about how all those different parts actually relate to each other and what that means for the cat's health. See, this is why I love these deep dives. You just never know what you're going to learn. Right. Okay, but back to those scans for a second. Yeah. They measured all these different points in the cat's spines. Right, they did. How in the world did they get those cats to hold still long enough to get a clear scan? Was there tuna involved? I bet it took some serious cat whispering to pull that off. Let's just say I'm glad I wasn't on that part of the research team. The study mentioned that the cats were under general anesthesia during those scans. So they were very cooperative patients. You could say that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, while they were basically, you know, snoozing peacefully, the researchers went in and took super precise measurements of everything. We're talking height, width, area wow. of both the spinal cord and the canal. And not just in one spot. Oh, no, at multiple points along each cat's spine. Talk about detail-oriented. That is a lot of data points they got from each cat. That's how we get this amazing information, though, right? Yeah. The kind of stuff that can help us take even better care of our furry friends. It's true. Okay, so we've got all this awesome data, but like with any good research, I'm sure there are some limitations we should probably talk about, uh, right? Absolutely. No <laughs> study is perfect, <laughs> right? And talking about those limitations, you know, it actually helps us understand the research even better. Good point. So what were some of the limitations these researchers pointed out about this study? Okay, well, one important thing they mentioned was that all those cats, all 15 of them, they were scanned lying on their stomachs. Okay. I mean, cats love to just sprawl out on their stomachs. Like, what's the big deal? My cat spends half her life like that. Right. But think about it. They're trying to get these super precise spinal measurements. So that relaxed, comfy pose that cats love so much, yeah, it can actually mess with the results.
Oh, really? How? Okay, so picture a cat's spine. It's got that natural curve to it, right? Yeah. It, it Part of what makes them such amazing movers. All graceful and agile, like little furry contortionists. Exactly. But when a cat's lying flat on its stomach, it's almost like that curve gets artificially straightened out a little bit, you know? Mm, okay. And that can affect how they're measuring the spinal cord and the canal. Ah, so it's like... If you're trying to measure a piece of string, you're going to get a different number depending on if it's all curled up versus if it's, you know, stretched out. Perfect analogy. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense. So how do researchers get around that? Like, could they scan them in a different position or is lying on their stomach the only way to do it? That is a great question. And it just highlights why it's so important for these researchers to, you know, really think about all this stuff when they're designing these studies. In this case, scanning them on their stomachs was just the most practical way to do it. But they even said so themselves that future studies, maybe they could try different positions and see if it changes those measurements. Oh, that'd be interesting. So maybe one day we'll have this whole database of cat spines in like every single yoga pose possible. Imagine yes. that. The internet would definitely go crazy for that. Cat scan yoga coming soon to a screen near you. Okay, so we've got the whole positioning thing. What other limitations were they thinking about? Let's see. Oh, yeah. They also mentioned that they were only able to really look at the spinal cord itself, you know, including the dura mater, which is kind of like the tough bodyguard membrane surrounding the spinal cord. Oh, right, to protect it. Right, but they couldn't actually get a clear picture of the subarachnoid space from these particular scans. And remind me, the subarachnoid space, that's the space between the spinal cord and the dura mater, right? Yes, exactly. And it's filled with, get this, cerebrospinal fluid. It's like extra cushioning, you know, extra protection for the delicate spinal cord. Oh, okay. So why is it important to get a measurement for that space? Well, think about it. The subarachnoid space, that can actually be a big factor in certain spinal conditions. Like take spinal stenosis, for example. What's that? Basically, it's when that space narrows yeah. and then you have all this pressure on the spinal cord, which... Bad news. Oh, that doesn't sound good. So are you saying, like, if they'd been able to get a good measurement of the subarachnoid space, they might have even more information about how healthy those cat spines were? Like, that they might be at risk for certain problems down the line? Exactly. And that's what's so cool about research like this is, like, they answer some questions, which is awesome. Hmm. But then it also leads to a whole bunch of new questions. It's like every new thing they learn just opens up this whole other door to explore. Right. And it's <laughs> science for you always pushing the boundaries. I love it. Okay, so let's do a quick recap for our listeners just to bring it all together. We've learned that male Korean short hairs, they've got those slightly larger spinal cords and canals than females. But even with that difference, the ratio between the two, that stays pretty consistent between the sexes. And then we talked about why that ratio matters so much, especially for vets who are trying to figure out what's going on with the cat's spine. Plus, we talked about some of those limitations of the study, like how they positioned the cats during the scans and what they could and couldn't measure. But here's my question for you, and maybe it's kind of a big picture question, but why does all this even matter? I mean, why should someone who's not a vet, who's not a researcher, why should they care about, like, the finer points of their cat's spine? Because it all comes back to appreciating just how incredibly complex and, you know, how incredibly varied life is. And we're talking about variation within a single species. Like, even within a breed like the Korean short hair, we see all these fascinating differences. And how these tiny little differences, like, inside their bodies can actually, you know, make a big difference in how healthy they are overall. It really is amazing. It's like we're moving past just trying to fix whatever's bothering them in the moment. Yeah. And starting to think about, like, how can we really take care of them in a way that makes sense for their, you know, their specific anatomy? It's like personalized medicine, but for cats. Personalized medicine for cats. I love it. All right, so I have one last question for you, and it's kind of out there. Hit me with it. Okay, so we've been talking this whole time about how, you know, male and female, Korean short hairs, they've got these differences in their spines, you know, even though that ratio pretty much stays the same. But it gets you thinking, right? Like, do those differences actually mean anything when it comes to, say, how flexible they are or how athletic they are? Could it even be why, I don't know, male cats and female cats, maybe they just move a little differently? Whoa. You're asking the big questions now. Yeah. And honestly, we don't really have a solid answer to that yet, at least not that I'm aware of. This study, they were laser-focused on just those anatomical measurements. They didn't even try to look at 
you know, any differences in behavior between the cats. So maybe there's something there, some connection, but we just need more research to figure it out. Totally. And that's what makes science so cool, right? Yeah. Every time we answer a question, it just opens up a million more. It's true. It makes you see your own cat in a whole new light, doesn't it? Like all those little quirks, maybe it's all connected to what's going on inside. Right. So to all our listeners out there, you know, next time you see your cat doing its thing, leaping tall buildings in a single bound or, yeah. you know, contorting itself into some impossible position, take a second and just, I don't know, appreciate that incredible engineering. You never know what kind of amazing design secrets you might be witnessing. This has been amazing. Thank you so much for, you know, taking us along on this deep dive into the wild world of, of all things cat spines. Anytime. Right. I'm always down to talk about animal anatomy, especially with people who get as excited about it as you do. And of course, a huge thank you to our listeners for geeking out with us today. We will be back soon with another deep dive, but until then, happy learning.